Hello. I'm waking up with this rainy weather here in uh, LA for like three days straight, which is kind of rare. I'll take it. Maybe that's cleaning out some of the air. There's a lot of problems here in LA that the the Indians detected a long time ago. They knew. They called it the Valley of Smoke. So, you know, things happen naturally in nature and they and they collect in this valley and the inversion layer with this like brown layer or whatever. These things were there before we even had all the cars here and, and the Indians knew about it. And they stayed away from this valley area because they knew that, you know, the air was compromised or, you know, maybe they called it the spirit or whatever they might have called that. But they, they knew it. And so... Um, so we just moved into this area and and now we have all the cars and everything else, but I got a feeling that some of this is just based on the area itself. Now you can make that worse, of course, um, by adding, you know, everything from smog to uh, 5G or 4G, whatever you want to call it, 4G, 600 megahertz, therefore we're entitling that 5G, um, but whatever, it's not technically a 5G um, full-on rollout, which involves microwaves, which are much, you'd need much more infrastructure and small little towers built pretty much on every corner, um, small mini little towers. So we don't have that yet, but we have this 4G that's masking itself as 5G because it's more, it's more 4G, which is bad. You know, those towers will hurt you if you get close to them. If you're within four or 500 meters, of them, they can hurt you over eight years, seven years, sometimes two years, sometimes one year, you know, it depends on your system. So, and they destroy deep sleep. But, so there is ways that they can make these things worse. But um, this is, this topic I wanted to cover has a lot to do with coronavirus and the scare and the panic and all this stuff. And so I was looking up some data rates and it turns out that LA County has 33% infection rates with the influenza this year or last year, sorry. And the, and they have had, over the last few years, an increase, but they've also been a high county compared to the rest of the nation. Especially, I mean, I don't know all counties, but especially compared to the, all the state averages, the, even the state average of California. But the state average, I mean, the, the L.A. county is almost double most state averages. I mean, some of the states are a little higher. You know, like state average is around 12, 15 percent, 12, 14, something like that. But... But as you get into more humid states, I don't know if it's because of their humidity. I just saw that, you know, these kind of southern kind of areas or, or whatever, you, um, you could find a little bit higher rates, you know, like 20 even. But those were a little bit more exceptional. And then uh, that was the national averages. Um, but L.A. County is at a 33% infection rate, which is insane. And so that applies not just to influenza and all that. It can apply to anything. I mean, anything pulmonary or infectious. I mean, they're, they're, it's just showing that the air here, I mean, there's less oxygen in the air, that's for sure. Uh, where is it coming from, you know, with all these like kind of shaved mountains and fired, fired out mountains, burnt out. And so where's the oxygen coming in, you know? Um, it doesn't rain a lot here. So that's another place the oxygen could come in through the ozone and, you know, this kind of heavily charged rain clouds and things. And so um, it's barely coming in through the nature here. Um, it's kind of like a little bit like Arizona, you know, where it's hard for them to clean out their air because there's it's a desert. So the goal is don't pollute it. You have to like be really careful. That's why I think they've not outlawed fires in Arizona, but they've definitely have controls on that um, because like, you know, starting your own little home fires and stuff like that can contribute a lot of pollution in an area like that. Um, so there's some areas, I mean, you know, there's so many microclimates in California, even around LA County that, you know, you can kind of get some, maybe some, some saving graces here and there. But in general, if you're not on the other side of these mountains that trap all this, uh, this valley, whatever you want to call it, like, you're going to have a hard time getting out of that. I mean, unless you're like on the mountain itself and maybe you, maybe the inversion layer like cuts at that angle or something. I don't know. But, you know, there's cold air coming off the mountains and maybe on the coast, a little bit of cold air coming from the coast. I mean, a lot, but who knows? That could kind of mix the air up a little bit and give you a little more saving grace there too. So there's some, you know, pockets of not happiness, but betterness maybe.
Um, so just knowing this helps you to understand like that this flu season or these seasons where you're feeling sick a lot, it's not coronavirus. Don't confuse it with that. Don't confuse it with all these other things. Like this is just like a bad bacterial world in this perma climate of perma paradise that we're in here in LA County sometimes where things don't die, you know, due to winter and due to these things. So sometimes it's better not to panic and realize that when you go through the season, which the season ends technically at the end of March, I mean the flu season, I mean as far as the big numbers and all that. So that's a that's a good sign. And so we're going through this month, kind of no travel ban or, or no travel Europe um, from Europe. And so um, yeah, it corresponds to, to April coming up. And who knows, maybe we'll have an amazing Easter. You know, like our our business is suffering too everywhere because of Europe panicking over it and everybody panicking. And so anyway, it's this is a testament to what the media is able to whip up. And maybe we need a big global whip up like this so that we can eventually break through and go, you know what, we're going to stop the whole like worldwide scare kind of madness that we're in. We have to kind of break free of that and kind of like not pretend it doesn't exist, but we have to like mitigate its effects on the drama in our system to where you're like, eh, oh yeah, it's kind of like the weatherman, you know, predicting all this stuff and then he's wrong. And you're like, yeah, well, that's just the divine comedy, isn't it? So human immunity will always be the master. It will never be vaccines and all this stuff. Human immunity always is the master. It's what wins out. That's why we're here today. We're not here today because of vaccines at all. Like our whole history had no vaccines, right? So we're here because of human immunity. The vaccines came late in the game and they pretended that they wiped out all these human sicknesses that were plaguing the whole world at all times. And that's not true. You know, there was times where things were plagued, but that was because there was, you know, borders were crossed. There was cultures that were being mixed together that had different you know, strains and all these things that, you know, and that created this kind of mix up. But during that mix up, a lot of people died. Yes. But uh, there was an immunity that was overcome. And who's to say if, you know, like, you know, this is, has a lot to do with a kind of a international world where we're all not mixed, but there's a lot more of that now. So that may have been one of the consequences of that kind of mixing. Um, and, you know, probably positive, too. I mean, like, it's like, who knows if we had to just develop a more international immune system. I don't know, you know. So, um, and there was some, you know, some fallout from that. But usually the sick and elderly and, and, and sometimes, you know, pre-existing conditions, things like that are the first to get attacked by these things, which is not, you know, it's a sad state for all people. Um, but... I just try to take some of the traditional wisdom, you know, the American Indians looked at, and I'm not glorifying them either because they've got their issues too as a culture, but like they, in some areas, um, they were very smart as far as the body and reading nature and things like that. So we try to use that part, right? Um, and, 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 and then try to, you know, combine that with, you know, it's, it's, it's acquiring whatever good experience they have to offer, but yeah, and they and they knew they knew that the flu and these type of things that came and and, and thinned out some of their tribe a little bit um, was part of a a healthy order in the genetic gene pool. And this is something we have to see. It's not like you want death and any of that, no. But you have to be not you have to be non immature or mature about the way you look at this. You know, if you see like a goose, you know, a goose sees its baby walking around and we don't see it walking funny. It walks totally normal to us, but she sees something we don't see. And so she kills it. And this happens all the time unless humans intervene and they're like, Oh, we can't do that. Let's send that one off here to, you know, and protect it and everything else. And I kind of get it. Okay. It's a natural human reaction, I guess. But in general, it may not be healthy because maybe she's protecting millennia of the gene pool by doing that. And so if you pull that out and you try to control that, that's going to end up, you know, ruining the gene pool of the geese. And they know what they're doing, so it's the same with us. These things are there just like death is there. We can't run from death either, you know? Like, it comes for us all. So we can't have this, like, non, 
you know, and some people die while they're alive, meaning they, they sacrifice a lot of themselves or their life or for others or whatever. There's metaphysical, I guess you could say, death and, and you know, and, and different things like that. But you all, like a plant, you know, it changes, it goes through change. And sometimes we have to die. We have to die to our old ideas. There's many rigid parts and they have to die. So we can't just maintain always everything. Everything's going to maintain exactly, you know, it's like, it's like, Cleaning the, chi the the deck chairs on the Titanic with a toothbrush, you know? Everything's going to maintain. And it's like, no, things aren't going to maintain. There will be death and transformation and all sorts of things on the path. So that's okay. But so what am I talking about here? I'm just trying to help, to help people come down off of this panic and realize that the place they're in um, is also heavily contaminated with bacteria this perma climate we have this perma weather where nothing dies in these bacteria just are having a ball game out here you know like they're everywhere i mean every time i leave the house i get like and even if i wash my hands every time i leave the house i sometimes during this exact season i feel like i'll be in the store somewhere like a grocery store and i'll feel like that little stomach turn you know that it's like did i bump into something here already you know i don't even remember touching anything but like every once in a while that happens to me and it's just like well it's just you're in a heavily contaminated air here you know and then not not to mention the 5g waves and what they can do the 4g waves whatever they can they can create flu-like symptoms too depending on how close you are and how much exposure and you know sitting on your computer all day like i'm doing right now can also create you can start sneezing. You'll notice if you sit around in the computer long enough, you start sneezing, you start feeling a little weaker, and it's almost like you're missing some vitamin C or some sort of antioxidant. I don't know the feeling that you have, but there's this kind of feeling that creeps in after a while, if you're aware of it. And so, which is normal. You know, these things are deadly, these computers, to a certain degree, if we do them all the time. You know, like, we can't, just because it's not touching you, doesn't mean it's not touching some part of you, meaning you're you know, field that's around you, electromagnetic, whatever that is. And so you're not just free because you're, I mean, that's like the materialistic view of science. Like, I can't, it's not touching me, therefore I'm, and it's like, that ain't how it works, you know. So, um, so we just have to find balance pretty much in all things and, and not abuse and, and even Wi-Fi and all that. I don't have Wi-Fi in my apartment. I don't have any of that. None of my printers, none of that. I, everything's run old school, cable. You can't see it though. It looks nice. Nobody really knows. Even my mouse is, is, is you know, cable. So I just kind of, you know, I try to limit that. And then I have some EMF protection. I have a bed canopy, which costs about a thousand bucks that I put over my bed that's made with EMF reflecting material. And it looks nice. It just looks like a mosquito tarp tent. Uh, not tarp because it's clear and see-through. I mean, it has like a, so it has a beauty to it. But Nobody ever knows what it does. And it also, I got bit by a spider one time in my brother's house. And now that never happens either because of this, this kind of thing surrounding the bed. So multiple advantages. Um, but so anyway, so there's some things we can do to sleep better. And, you know, most people's sleep problems, they look everywhere for it. But it's, it's a lot of the waves. It's a lot of stuff that's penetrating the walls and coming in to destroy our deep sleep, especially in dense areas like L.A. County where you can be near some towers and mini towers and different combinations. I mean, you can look up these antennas online and find thousands of them all around you, you know, not technically you, if you, you have, if they're 0.23 miles away, which is what I've found in some areas, um, like you're, you're okay as far as your sleep goes, but I would still recommend protecting yourself. So anyway, most of the things that we're getting sick from are in the environment. They're not in the body. They're not caused by God's genetics and all this stuff now. They're just using that as a way to trick you out. The environment is causing everything. And a lot of the reasons we can't get free of the problems that we have and diseases is because we can't get back to a no harm, first rule of medicine, do no harm. We cannot get back to a no um, harm state. We're in, we keep staying in a state which is harming us. We don't know it. We keep eating that food or we keep doing that thing or we keep keeping that deficiency on that we don't know. And we keep these things going and so we keep harming. So we can't get out of it. 
I mean, you'd be amazed once you get your apartment free of the EMF waves using a meter and you, and you get your um, water, you know, you're only drinking bottled glass water from historic sources, huh? And so there's only a few of those out there, but yeah, they can be ordered. I even heard you can order that through these like, you know, container companies, you know, where they set up this thing in your house. And I don't use those things that they set up those little machines to pour the water because they're all plastic, but you can throw that on a ceramic thing with a spigot and then you're fine. But like those companies are now even providing glass bottles and, and better water. You know, so they know, you know, everybody knows it's moving up. You just have to pay a little more for it, but it's moving up. People know. So if you clean out the water, air, and watch all the showering, don't bathe. I wouldn't bathe in L.A. County either. I would never bathe in that water. I mean, unless you have, like, a really good filtration system, and then on top of that home filtration system, you have an RO system for that bath. <laughs> so if you have, like, that combination... Or you have a uh, professional system for RO, um, which costs about seven grand for like a, I mean, if you're trying to do whole house, it costs about seven grand. Um, so you can't do it cheaper than that because the problem is, is the, all the mesh filters they use for the RO and, and they're all plastic. So you get BPA coming back through all that system and, you know, you, you need like, you need stainless steel, like high quality surgical grade and just do it right. You know, cost you seven grand, but it'll be the best system you got and it'll, it'll work. And I think it's okay as an investment. You got a $500,000 home, you throw seven grand on there. I think it's okay. So, um, but, um, yeah, so, or you can do, you know, there's like these $3,000 solutions that, that use a lot of carbon and stuff and they, they work to a certain degree, but they don't filter out certain things either. So, um, yeah, they're like fluoride and, and there's a lot of things they leave in. And so you need the RO addition, you know? And so, I don't know. I don't want you to be paranoid, but you do have to go outside of the status quo system sometimes in order to figure these things out. If you're doing something like everybody else, well, then you may be falling into these traps somehow because uh, the FDA has been run by Monsanto execs and they've been running the game for 50 years now. And so we, all these execs from one company trading over to the FDA, and I mean, we've been blind to this ridiculousness. There's a chart out there that shows all of these reversal of seats in these companies to the FDA. And of course they explain it as like, well, their expertise is why they would cross over into these areas. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Cross over into the controlling area of the company. And you know, it's still, if that's not a conflict of interest, but so we just fall for it. We keep, yeah, we keep somehow thinking it's okay. Obama chooses the head of one of the heads, CEO, like not CEO, but one of the, the top executives of Monsanto to be the head of the Department of Agriculture. And we're just like, yay, Obama's cool. He's so cool. So we don't pay attention. And no, it's not cool. So they got a lot of stuff approved by the FDA under him. Lots of stuff, you know. And so we have to be careful. I mean, they've all screwed us for many years. So we just have to be careful. We have to start waking up. But um, my goal is to help people find harmony and protect themselves and know that they have strength in so doing and they're not a victim of this system. They can protect themselves if they so choose to walk, to wake up and to see these things for what they are. But if they want to believe that none of these things are happening because they're still in a Stockholm Syndrome type of, you know, pet, put on a pedestal your abuser, which is what a lot of people are in. I mean, we hate to admit that because you're like, wow, Stockholm Syndrome, isn't that for people who've been traumatized? It's like, yeah, but we all have been. That's the thing is, you know, the, the, it's called background trauma. It doesn't even have to be personal trauma. It's just, you know, the background trauma of, of, of all of these things in our air, water, and, and all the fake news and all the lies and all of that stuff. Lies harm you. All that untruth harms your soul. It harms you in such a deep way and you're not conscious of it, but it's trauma, you know? So until we clear all that stuff out, that the, all the lies and all that stuff, even with history and error, we got to clear a lot of stuff out. You know, you got to start typing politically incorrect view of history, uh, revisionist. I mean, you got to find so many things that are alternative to be able to counterbalance the story we've been given. 
So, and it's all out there, but you have to look for it. I mean, I can't find hardly anything on the first page of Google. I have to usually use search terms, which go against everything that they're saying somehow in order to find maybe one article that has something going the opposite direction. And then from there, I have to kind of open that up and find those people around that. And, and you basically go into your own type of investigation where you're creating your own news. And you can do that too on websites, government websites. You can go straight to the website, see the laws that are being passed, see what's really happening. You'd be surprised at the statistics you can find just on public government websites, which allow you to create real news by looking at, well, wait, this is what's really happening, you know, um, without having to wait for an article that sums it up or tries to spin it in another direction. You can find out true news. So that's what we have to do. We can't delegate our investigative capacity to these people, to these reporters. We can't. We can a little bit, but we can't. But we have to also maintain. It's just like me with my accountant in France. Like, I I have to, you know, pay him for this, that, and the other, which I'm not happy about because you're kind of forced into it in France the way they do it. But um, but I can't. I have to also do my own accounting to a certain degree, at least at the base level. And so I have to be I have to be checking all my reports, checking everything I can and reconfirming. I mean I've had many errors that I've had to confirm with them that were wrong. And so what I'm saying is you can't over delegate. You have to learn to build the I, the vertical principle in you. You have to build your own individuality. So you can't you can delegate a little bit here and there, but you have to you have to have a little bit of um, knowledge of that area first of all to know how to delegate because you found your limit but you can't just um, obliterate your autonomy by delegating things to others including news so this is part of freedom including health you know this is also part of freedom you know we've given so much power to doctors and the doctors we know that their schooling is funded by pharmaceutical companies at least the you know the end last years and you know all the the lab labs and and everything and and so we but we keep going with it we know they don't study nutrition we know it's not about prevention we know it's just like red line you know emergency stuff but we go there for prevention in a way we think oh let's go get tested for this that and the other all the time without any symptoms and then i don't think that's healthy you know it's don't it's like over it's like scientific um superstition believing that their framed debate and argument on something is going to be exactly pointing you to the truth of how to fix that something which is ridiculous i mean they can help you in certain areas and they're supposed to in those areas but they're not going to help you in others and and you know most doctors give vaccines i mean they not all but a lot of them prescribe vaccines to our children which is probably the biggest piece of the puzzle as to why we're sick it really is even if you don't get autism from it, there, you're already having a lot of uh, issues that you don't even know. There's thousands of diseases that probably link to that, link to, the, to what's happening there. And there's more and more that are coming online as having that etiology. People are starting to figure this out, that it's the worst thing you can do to a child, is not give them a few antigens. People aren't against the antigen part of the vaccine. That was never the problem. All the problem is all these strange proteins and and thimerosal, and then they went on to aluminum, and then they went on to we don't use mercury anymore, but we clean it with mercury or something. And there's like all this language to where we can clean it with these products, and they barely are in there, so it's different now. And you know, it's just ridiculous. So they're able to not consider it as an ingredient because now it's a cleaner, or it's you know, it just and whatever. You know, it's just getting worse and worse, and we're getting stupider and stupider. <laughs> drinking fluoridated water and everything else and then we're not questioning this anymore so this is getting bad so we have to kind of like wake up to our to to not allowing this to happen we have to start having I, I almost feel like the world's phase that we're moving into is called boundaries and that's the stage we're moving into the first stage is just the recognition of you know yourself to a certain degree and then the boundary stage is after that where it's like okay i exist boom okay then what's the boundary boom you know it's like the two levels that surround you but but at, but even a lot of us are not even at the i exist yet there's still we're still very much group soul very much sheep in a lot of ways and so as we reach and find ourselves um 
I feel like you can't truly find yourself without spirit. So you can't, I mean, it doesn't mean you have to have a religion or something, but like there's some sort of spiritual connection to self and spiritual in general are the same thing. A connection to self and, and spiritual connection is for me the same thing. So taking this forward, um, what is this podcast about? I don't know. It's just kind of helping you to see that um, we have to start waking up. We can't be silent all the time and and um, and give people a pass because we don't want to investigate. So we give them a pass because we're just like, oh, it's just too dark. It's too dark to think that these things are happening to us. And it's like, no, it's not. It is dark, but it's dark because we are, we are in that ignorance of it. It's our own darkness. So if we would stop being ignorant of it and shine light into it, the light of our consciousness, then it would be that much less dark, that world. And then you multiply that times however many people, well, then you have a revolution. Or not even, I don't like that word, but you have a, a, a revolution in lucidity, you could say. A, a revolution of clarity, you know, where people start to become more clear about what's happening. And therefore, even clarity in and of itself is already a boundary. It's already a boundary when we move out of that murk and we start to see things for what they are. It's already seeing things in their actual state and that becomes its own boundary in a sense. People always say, well, what do I have to do? It's like, well, seeing it is what you have to do. That's the hardest part. You know, like what they say, knowledge is half the battle. So that's it. So once you can see it, then that's okay. You, you're there. You, you'll, be, you'll be able to feel what you need to do next if you can at least get to the level of just being able to see or hear the message. So anyway, if that can help anybody, so be it. Um, we also um, sell other products at our website, um, books and things like uh, for nutrition to help break through the paradigm, the, the fake news on nutrition, break through the paradigm of the heart too. We also have books on that to help with the emotional healing and getting back to the self and and getting back to the spirit so body soul and spirit healing over at theheartoftradition.com check us out we also sell transdermal magnesium which is very important because it's the number one deficiency in the world and it's an undetected deficiency uh not undetected it's well known but it's unclaimed by most people they feel like they're above it or they can't you know they don't need it or whatever and so we're trying to help people realize they do need it and it does help and many different systems to get you out of medical enslavement and move you towards natural cures which actually work and don't have patents and copyrights and all this shit, but we're doing it right, doing it in a, in a general way where you can get these things to work for all people at $2.50 a week. So anyway, come check us out, heartoftradition.com.